It was time for a five monthly progress review. I think at the four month mark, I was talking about getting the aircraft ready for covering. It was up on the wheels, um, had the boot cowl on, I'd finished the fuel system, had the ELT tray mounted, and uh, yeah, I was quite happy with progress at that stage. So um, looking forward from then, I was about to get a um, self storage unit, move the wings into there. Well, that, that all went ahead. The last month has been extremely productive and I've been uh, concentrating largely on covering the aircraft. So come and take a look. Here it is. Um, I've lowered it down to the floor. So what I did is I put it back on the wooden frame. That wooden frame has been really, really good. It does take a little bit of time, uh, probably about an hour to uh, mount, it, mount the frame on the front, lift it up off the wheels. I took the wheels off, stripped all the boot cowling off and uh, there it is. What I did also, I cut the legs a wee bit shorter so I was able to drop it right down uh, close to the floor. Now I have done a couple of other videos uh, in the interim um, showing the interior covering and a few other bits and pieces. So this is just a, a general recap. So um, let's take a walk around. I spent a lot of time before the covering working on the gas struts uh, for the front doors and also for the cargo doors. Now I guess that's classed as a modification. It does take quite a lot of time um, but that's the nature of it and very very happy with how they came out. I spent several weeks um, backwards and forwards with Dynon and uh, we've got the Dynon order finalised and uh, that should be shipping, if it hasn't already it'll be shipping I think in the next few days and uh, they've been very very good to deal with. So we spent quite a lot of time, uh, Jonathan from Dynon and myself, uh, either on the phone or via email discussing different types of aerials and uh, largely the connectors that we were going to use because the, the products themselves, the displays and uh, all the background avionics largely are off the shelf once you've decided what you're going to go with. The uh, intricacy really is, uh, the detail is just in how you're going to hook it up and uh, the lengths of the cable runs and that, and that type of thing. One of the other things I discussed uh, last month was the possibility of getting some Kydex. I finally managed to locate some. Um, it's on its way. Uh, it's probably the world's most expensive Kydex given the cost of the freight. Now, there you go. And I think I've still got to pay um, import duty and goods and services tax on it when it gets here. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, I'll, I'll keep you posted with that one. So, back to the covering. What I did first was I covered the interior. And uh, that was quite a learning exercise. I'll give you a look. Um, here you go. You can see inside. I have done an individual video on that. So take a look at that if you're interested. Um, the, the thing about covering, it's not hard and I'm finding it very, very enjoyable. The aircraft really ta uh, starts to take shape quite quickly. And I think because of that, that makes it even more enjoyable. There was probably a week uh, all up doing the interior. And then I started working on the exterior. So here's what I did last week covering the belly of the fuselage. What I did is I started working on the underside uh, initially. It just seemed a logical place to start. I've covered the, uh, the bottom of the aircraft with a, a heavy uh, type of fabric and the top and sides are done in a medium um, weight fabric. That gives it added protection underneath from rocks and things flicking up from the wheels and the propeller. And uh, what it did, um, so there's actually uh, a bit of time went into the preparation and uh, when you actually come to covering it, it, it starts to go along quite quickly and it's quite satisfying too because the aircraft actually looks like it's taking shape. So I cut the, uh, the belly fabric out and uh, what you do is you use the Stuart Systems, well I've been using Stuart Systems cement, it's water based, it's odourless, it goes on very very easily and you simply paint it onto the longer ons. Now the longer ons running uh, either side there or in this case because it's lying on its side top and bottom and in between you've got the stringers. So what you do is you, you use uh, tape like a fabric tape to tape over any sharp edges. Then I applied the Stuart System cement along the, uh, the outside longer ones, let it tack up for 10 or 15 minutes until it's just uh, tacky to touch. And then you go and put the, uh, the fabric into place and you can actually just roll it over with your hands. You can use um, an iron at about 250 uh, Fahrenheit and just use that to uh, tack it into place. And once you've got it all um, sitting where you want, you go along with the iron and just uh, use the heat to activate the glue. Once you've done that, it's a simple case of painting some more glue on and what you're looking for there is to fill the weave so that the, the glue actually encapsulates all the weave in the fabric. You paint it on, you do, a, you do an area maybe 
you know, two or three feet long. And then you, you wipe it off so that the, the glue is not building up um, and going to show through your paintwork too much. Quite satisfying to do. I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. So I did the bottom uh, panel first, then I did the sides, and then I did the top last. So what you, what you end up with is the, the bottom piece of fabric wraps around that longer on onto the inside. It, uh, it gives it quite a lot of surface adhesion. Then you put the side fabric on, that overlaps the bottom fabric. You've got to overlap it by uh, at least an inch minimum. And then uh, what you do, so you can actually see a, probably a, a little bit of a line actually showing through there slightly. That's the edge of the side fabric. And then you put a tape over the top and you center that on the edge of the uh, top layer of fabric. So that, that encapsulates both pieces of fabric and uh, the whole lot is encapsulated by the Stuart Systems uh, glue. It gives you a very, very strong uh, joint there. Done a lot of work up the front here. Uh, just strengthened it all up first with some, um, I, I ran some lateral uh, tapes first before covering it up with the, with the finishing tape on top. I spent a lot of time, um, actually just yesterday, doing these inspection ports. I've still got um, another one to go down here. I decided to wait until I'd covered the vertical fin and I'll do that either tonight or tomorrow. If I zoom in, you can probably see a little bit uh, more of the detail on these inspection ports. I've made a number of plates up here. This is to, to cover the, the small inspection ports. The hard part for these is actually going to be locating the hole in the correct place. You know, they're, they're all match drilled, but it occurred to me, I don't know how to get that hole in the, in the right area. It's not in the center. Um, unless it's purely coincidental. So I think I'm going to make a template up out of cardboard. Um, the other thing I'll do is I'll, I'll make it oversized and put a grommet in it. So this is uh, one of the ones that will go down the back. And I'll just show you what, a, what I've done here. That's going to mount um, round about there. I've put a few bends in it because it actually curves. I'll glue it to the fabric. So firstly, I've actually got to install the nut plates. Then I'll glue it to the fabric and uh, then I'll put more fabric over the top of it and it will end up looking like these ones. It's a little bit tricky because once you've got the nut plates installed on the inspection plate, of course it won't sit flush on the fabric. So then what I do is I take the soldering iron and uh, put holes through the fabric. The, the soldering iron does a really wonderful job of melting fabric, sealing the ends, but you've just got to be very, very careful that you only melt the portions uh, that you want. <laughs> I've only just uh, done the vertical fin here, actually covered one side last night, one side this afternoon. I've rib stitched it and put uh, two inch tapes on it and I've still got more taping to do um, down the front. That actually went really well. I was, I was concerned to start with how the uh, layer of the fabric would go here. But, but actually what I did is I, I laid the fabric in place and cut it roughly in place, slightly oversized, and I discovered that if I allowed the, the fabric, the line of it, if you drew a straight line there, the line would actually curve when it's in place. And that's how I, that's how I got around that problem. The other thing I've discovered is that with the Stuart Systems glue, if you do it while it's wet, it is a bit messy. And as long as the temperature is fairly cool, it doesn't dry out fast. What that allows you to do is move it around and I've used that a lot. Now it gets really messy because you end up with glue all over your hands, but you get a really good finish on it. The risk is you can end up with some glue lines if it dries and in places I do have some glue lines, but fortunately I'm not a perfectionist. So that's where we're at at the moment. Got the Dynon uh, order on its way, got the Kydex on its way, covered the in interior, covered the exterior. I've got a little bit of work to finish that and uh, worked on the gas struts and, and finished all of those. Obviously, once the Dynon kit arrives, there's quite a lot of work, and I'm thinking probably roughly a month, something like that. What I've got to do is build an avionics rack in behind the instrument panel. I've made a few inquiries. It looks like I can cut the instrument panel using high-pressure high water jets. There's a couple of places in town that will do that for prototyping work. And a friend of mine does uh, laser cutting, and he's offered to make up a template so that we can cut it do a trial run uh, in, a, in effect out of some plastic that he uses and he's going to give me um, 
I, I guess it's like a, uh, a program or a data sheet that, that they make up to do that. Once we know that it's correct, and I'll take that down to the prototyping guys and get them to cut the instrument panel itself. That will save me a lot. So I've got a choice uh, where to proceed from here over the next month or so. If the Dynon instruments arrive, uh, let's say in the next two or three weeks, then it's fairly clear cut. What I'll do is I'll go and build a, uh, an instrument rack and uh, form up the instrument panel as well. But it's looking more and more like uh, that's probably going to be a month or six weeks away, I think, by the time they arrive. So I'm thinking most likely what I'll do is proceed with uh, building a paint booth, getting the fuselage and all the parts ready to paint, and uh, I can make a lot of progress there. I've got uh, the rudder surfaces, the elevators, the tailplane, and the fuselage itself, plus all the boot cowl panels and everything. Everything except for the, uh, the nose cowl and the main wings themselves. So my plan is to build a temporary paint, paint booth here in the garage and uh, one that can be disassembled uh, in between jobs. I'll, I'll then reassemble it at a later stage to proceed with painting the wings. I think that's probably a, a good four week job uh, ahead of me. I've got to seal all the fabric parts first. You, to seal them, apparently you just use a, a watered down version, I think two to one mix of the Stuart System uh, green cement there. You then uh, spray on a, a filler, two or three uh, cross coats of filler, and sand it lightly back in between, and then it's ready for painting. I've got no experience uh, in spray painting at all. I've got a lot to learn, a lot of research to do, videos to watch, manuals to read, um, but it's all there, and uh, I'm really looking forward to it.